Have you ever been tired of all the stories and gossip going around about you? Do you often try to please other people, or have you ever been too worried about what they might say or how they look? It's natural to care what other people think, but it can also make us feel insecure and put unnecessary pressure on ourselves. Sometimes trying too hard to meet other people's expectations can make you lose your true essence. We've all felt these emotions to some degree. So how do you deal with the pressure of other people's opinions and stay true to yourself? Marcus Aurelius, a great Stoic philosopher, said that the best way to understand someone who is judging you is to get inside them. Marcus Aelius wrote, Look at what kind of person he is, and you'll find that you don't need to strain to impress him. He also stressed that we don't always think about the character of the person criticizing us. For example, you wouldn't take driving advice from someone who isn't good at driving, or financial advice from someone who doesn't understand finance. So why let people who don't matter to you affect you? In today's video, we'll look at seven lessons for let's learn together and get to know the people around you better. You'll quickly see that there's nothing to worry about. Self-confidence and inner peace are the best things that will drive you on your journey. Lesson number one, get advice from people you can trust. In the 21st century, there is a huge amount of information available to us, and it's easy to get wrong information. In these situations, it's more important than ever to get advice from trustworthy experts. This not only helps us tell the difference between correct and false information, but it also helps us develop analytical and critical thinking skills, which is something Marcus Aurelius always valued. This is true not only in school or the workplace, but in every part of life, whether you are looking into health, personal finance, relationship management, or just a new hobby. Advice from reliable sources is the key to getting deep and accurate insights. For example, a young man who is just starting a business is very excited, but is met with doubt and criticism from others. Instead of giving up, he chooses to talk to a financial expert for advice. This expert not only has in-depth knowledge of economics and business management, but also has many years of experience advising startup companies, providing complete information, not only about issues and problems, but also on how to establish and develop a successful business. Trust in your entrepreneurship. It is important to remember that in the pursuit of leadership, we must learn to be independent and not rely entirely on the opinions of others, as Marcus Aurelius said in his book. It is best to think about revenge and not believe that he did the damage. As we develop independent thinking and independence in life, we encourage rationality between listening to and learning from others expressing ourselves and evaluating information. The core principle of Stoic philosophy ultimately seeks guidance from trusted people, and this helps us build a strong social and professional network through interaction and learning, not only gathering knowledge and experience, but also developing open relationships and relationships. These relationships not only provide short-term benefits, but can also support and enhance our careers and personal development in the long term. From Marcus Aurelius' perspective, it is not only a way of learning, but also a part of personal development, helping us learn not only how to do and solve problems, but also how to live and act correctly and ethically. Thus we can see that Marcus Aurelius's advice to seek guidance from faithful people is not only an important principle in Stoic philosophy, but also a powerful guide in modern life by seeking help from wisdom and experience. It not only enriches knowledge and skills, but also discovers the way to develop yourself correctly and deeply. Many times in life, we need help making decisions, whether they are about relationships, careers, or big choices in our lives. It's important to get help, 
but it's also important to make sure that the advice we get comes from reliable sources. We'll talk about why it's important to get advice from people we can trust and how that can make our lives better. Find trustworthy people. Think of the people in your life who have always shown that they are honest, wise and genuinely care about your well-being. People you can trust are those who want what's best for you and have the knowledge and experience to give you good help. Think about their point of view. Ask people who have knowledge or experience in the area you need help with for tips. Think about how their point of view fits in with your own values, goals and current situation. Know that their advice might not match up with what you first thought, but it's important to keep an open mind and give their ideas some thought. Look at the track record. Think about the history of the people you're thinking about asking for help. Have they given you good advice in the past? Do they really do what they say? Trust is earned over time by being reliable and doing the same things over and over again. Open communication. Build a connection with someone you trust based on open communication and mutual respect. Make a space where you can talk about your worries and ask for help without worrying about being judged. Remember that talking to someone means talking back and forth, so be open to their comments and suggestions. Trust your gut. It's good to get advice from people you trust, but in the end, you should believe your gut. You should think about the help you get, but ultimately you should make choices that feel right to you and are in line with your values. It's just as important to trust your own judgment as it is to believe what other people say. Getting help from people you can trust is an important part of growing as a person and making decisions. You can handle life's challenges with more confidence and clarity if you surround yourself with trustworthy people. Listen to what they have to say, look at their track record, encourage open communication and believe your gut. Remember that the advice and knowledge of trusted friends and family can help you a lot on your way to success and happiness. Lesson number two, change the way you think about negative things on the path to pleasure and balance. Setting personal limits is very important. Negative thoughts can pull us into a lot of tough situations, like a magnet drawing iron pieces to itself. We have problems with money and relationships, which not only affects our mental health, but also messes up every part of our lives. Marcus Aelius, who wrote about Stoicism, said that inner strength and self-control are the keys to facing and solving problems. He sent a strong message. Turning bad thoughts into positive actions is what makes you strong. Negative thoughts can keep us stuck in a cycle of worry and depression if we don't do anything about them. But if we recognize and change these thoughts, we can turn them into forces that help you learn and grow. Linda's story shows how to take back bad thoughts to help yourself grow. A young, passionate engineer named Linda worked for a well-known tech company and was given a project she had never done before. People questioned and criticized her abilities, which made Linda think negatively about herself. I can't do this, it's too hard. But instead of giving up, Linda chose to reframe her negative thoughts. This is a great chance for me to challenge myself. Linda started to do more study, take classes to improve her skills, and ask more experienced co-workers for advice. This not only helped her do well on the project, but it also made her feel better about herself and gave her a more positive outlook. Marcus Aelius thought that you only have control over your own thoughts and not over outside events. Realize this and you'll find strength. He told us to look at things in a good way. We shouldn't let negative thoughts take over our minds. This not only lowers stress and anxiety, but it also makes room for creativity and finding solutions. Things don't always go as planned in life. 
but how we choose to see and deal with them decides the quality of our lives. Marcus Aurelius said that reorganizing our bad thoughts is not only a way to be strong, it's also a way of life that helps us find and keep inner peace. Have you ever been in a situation like Linda's? If so, describe it and explain how you dealt with it. Please share your story in the comments. We want to hear it and share it. We all face bad things in life that can slow us down and stop us from moving forward. It's important to remember, though, that our view shapes our world. It is possible to turn problem into chances for growth and development if we change the way we think about them. Understand the power of perception. Know that how you see something affects how you feel it. Know that you can pick how you will react and understand what is happening in your life. Practice being thankful. Make it a habit to be thankful by thinking about the good things in your life. Even when things are hard, writing down the things you're thankful for can help you get through them. Reframe your bad thoughts. You can fight bad thoughts by asking yourself if they are true and looking at things from different points of view. Instead of talking badly to yourself, use positive mantras and helpful ways of thinking. Accept failure as a chance to learn. Change the way you think about failing and see it as a way to get better. Learn from your mistakes and use them to get better and stronger. Surround yourself with positive influences. Spend time with optimistic, helpful people who inspire and encourage you. Limit your time spent with bad things like negative people, the media, or your surroundings. When you follow these rules, you can change the way you think about bad things and develop a stronger, more upbeat attitude. Remember that you can choose to be positive and you have the power to change your outlook and make the future better. Lesson number three, think about what you did. Stoic philosophy says that thinking about your actions is one of the most important things you can do to improve yourself. This is more than just good advice. It's a way of life and a way to become deeply aware of yourself and keep improving yourself. When we stop, take a deep breath and look at every action, thought and word that comes out of our mouths. We start to see a new world of understanding and self-mastery. Imagine that you are sitting by the bank of life and looking at the flow of choices and actions you have made. Every thought and action, no matter how small, is like a drop of water that makes up the stream of who you are as a person. Marcus Aurelius thought that by thinking about our mistakes and strengths, we not only learn to accept them, but also grow from them. He said, if someone can show me that what I think or do is wrong, I will happily change, for I seek the truth by which no one was ever truly harmed. It is the person who continues in his self-deception and ignorance who is harmed. This quote stresses how important it is to be honest with yourself in order to learn from your mistakes and get better. By reflecting, we not only learn more about ourselves, but we also gain the strength to deal with other people's opinions and criticism. When we take the time to think, we open the door to confidence and freedom from the weight of criticism and judgment. Every day, Marcus Aurelius tells us to make choices that are in line with our true selves so that we can build a personal fortress that is unaffected by outside voices. In this lesson, Marcus Aurelius not only teaches us a philosophy, but also motivates us to live a meaningful, deep and full life. He says, reflect on your own actions is not just advice. It is a guiding light on the path of self-improvement and self-awareness, opening up a wonderful journey for us to explore and honor ourselves. Comment. I am ready to let us know you're starting your journey of self-reflection. Thinking about what we did is an important part of growing and developing as a person. It helps us see what happens when we make decisions, learn from them, and then make better choices in the future. Think about what you did is the key to this process. It tells us to stop, think about, and accept our actions. 
To learn more about this reflective exercise, pause and acknowledge. Take a moment to recognize the event or situation that made you think about something. Seeing what happened is the first step to knowing what it means, whether it was a success or a failure. Look at intentions. Think about what you were trying to do when you did it. Were your choices really based on good intentions, or were they affected by biases, feelings, or outside pressures? Figuring out what you want to do can help you understand how you act. Look at the effects. Think about the short and long-term effects of what you're going to do. Were they in line with your plans? How did they make you and the other people engaged feel? Thinking about the results of your actions helps you understand how they affected other people. List the lessons learned. Think about what you've learned from what happened. Were there things you could have done differently? What can you learn that will help you act or make decisions better in the future? Turning failures into chances to grow means figuring out what you can learn from them. Finally, make a promise to use your thoughts to change how you act in the future. Use what you've learned to guide your decisions, learn to understand others, and keep trying to get better. Don't forget that reflection isn't just dwelling on the past, it's also about using what you've learned to make the future better. In conclusion, Think about what you did is a strong warning to look inside ourselves, learn from our mistakes, and grow as people. We can go through life with more mindfulness, empathy, and wisdom if we take time to think about our actions, our goals, the results, the lessons we can learn, and our commitment to growth. Take a moment to think about what you did the next time you're in a tough situation. It could lead to a big change in your life. Lesson number four, celebrate your win. Picture that every day is a picture and every little win is a bright stroke on it. This important lesson was taught to us by Marcus Aurelius's deep thoughts. Celebrate every triumph of yours. Success comes from finishing a small task or reaching a big goal. Both teach us the value of hard work and let us experience the deep joy of living wholeheartedly. When we take the time to recognize and celebrate our successes, we not only make memories, but also strengthen ourselves. Marcus Aurelius thought that when we celebrate our wins, we not only feel better about ourselves, but we also plant the seeds of confidence and faith in the future. That's the power of celebration. It inspires us to keep going with fire and unending hope. Imagine that you are a passionate artist who is painting a beauty. At an art show, you show off a painting that you put a lot of thought into, and people compliment it. Others aren't impressed, but you don't care about what they say. Instead, you're happy that you've finished and shown a deeply personal piece of art. You know that every brushstroke on the canvas is an expression of your passion and determination, which is why you're proud of it. Marcus Aurelius taught us that we shouldn't let other people's ideas get in the way of our happiness. Instead, we should focus on the freedom and happiness that creative art gives us. We should not let other people's negative opinions lower the value of what we have accomplished. When you look at your painting and smile, you'll know that you have been true to yourself and followed your passion with all your might. Marcus Aurelius reminds us that every step we take, no matter how small, is a step toward becoming the best version of ourselves. When we celebrate our victories, we not only make lasting memories, but we also learn from them. It's not just an act of joy, it's also an act of growing up and becoming aware of oneself. This lesson not only tells us how to live a meaningful life, but it also gives us the key to spiritual freedom, when we celebrate every victory, we honor life and feed our souls and spirits. Victories are like strokes on a canvas. Each one makes life more colorful and lively. If you agree with the above point of view, please like the video. People who are successful usually work hard, don't give up, and are dedicated. But as we work toward our goals, 
It's important not to forget how important it is to celebrate our wins, no matter how small. Celebrating our successes not only makes us feel good about what we've done, but it also lifts our spirits, inspires us to do more, and makes us feel grateful. Acknowledge your success. Before moving on to the next job or goal, stop and think about what you've already done well. Appreciate the work, time and resources that went into meeting this goal. By recognizing your success, you validate your hard work and determination, which gives you more confidence for future tasks. Think about your journey. Thinking about your journey helps you remember the problems you've solved, the lessons you've learned, and the changes you've gone through. Take time to think about how you can be successful. You can do this by writing in a notebook, meditating, or talking to mentors. Understanding your trip not only makes you appreciate your win more, but it also gives you useful information for future projects. Celebrate with a purpose. There are many ways to celebrate, from a quiet time to think to a big event with family and friends. But the important thing is to party for a reason. Pick traditions or activities that speak to you and fit with your values. Whether you're celebrating with a dinner with family and friends, a trip by yourself, or just a pat on the back, make sure it fits the importance of your accomplishment. Say thank you. Success is rarely gained by one person. It usually includes getting help, advice and support from other people. Thank the people who have helped you succeed, whether they are teachers, co-workers, friends or family. A sincere thank you not only makes your relationship stronger, but it also spreads the happiness of your win, making it even better. Set new goals. It's great to celebrate your win, but it's just as important to keep going by making new plans and goals. Use your recent success to help you with future projects. Let your accomplishments push you to go even higher, whether it's taking on new tasks, improving your skills, or doing good in your community. Finally, enjoying your wins isn't just a way to enjoy your success. It's a mindful practice that helps you grow feeds your spirit and makes you stronger. In order to fully embrace success as a trip and not just a destination, you need to recognize your accomplishments, think about your journey, celebrate with purpose, show gratitude and set new goals. Take a moment to enjoy your victory today and let it push you toward a better tomorrow. Lesson number five, establish boundaries. What do you think boundaries are like? Are they invisible walls that keep us in a private space where we can think and grow? Or are they signs of strength that protect the soul from the noise and chaos of the outside world? In every part of our lives, from making simple decisions to dealing with complicated relationships, we are pulled and influenced by a lot of demands and expectations from the outside world. Sometimes we may feel lost and overwhelmed by all the opinions. A setting limits on yourself is not only a way to protect yourself, but also the first step toward a happy life. This is not just a philosophical idea. It is an important part of the path to peace and self-mastery. Marcus Aurelius taught that in this never-ending race, finding out what matters to us is the key to living a meaningful life. He tells us to learn to choose which thoughts to feed our minds, which emotions to let affect our souls, and which actions to take that show our self-mastery. Some people in David's office at a big company push him to work extra hours and do extra work every day. At first, David tried to do everything in order to be liked, but he soon realized that it made him feel tired and off balance in life. This is an example of how important it is to set limits for yourself. David should use this lesson to refuse unnecessary overtime work and make time for personal introspection. David should also learn how to politely but clearly tell people what he thinks and that he needs to find a balance between work 
and personal life. This will make David happier and less stressed, and it will also make his work better. This is another example that shows how setting limits not only helps keep the peace inside, but also improves self-control and self-esteem at work. By setting limits, we not only keep out negative thoughts and unreasonable requests from others, but we also make a personal space where freedom and self-esteem can grow. In this space, we learn to listen to ourselves, value our true values, and build the strength to handle any challenges. Marcus Aurelius tells us that setting limits isn't a way to separate people, but an act of self-respect and deep self-awareness. Protecting one's inner space not only keeps unwanted people out, but also lets in true peace, balance, and happiness. Lesson number six, learn to accept yourself. Marcus Aurelius taught that in this busy and noisy world, finding self-acceptance is not just a lesson, it's a magical path to one's own heart. Marcus Aurelius gave us a way to find spiritual freedom and to rise above the worries of other people's opinions in order to live a meaningful and peaceful life. Imagine you are a young musician navigating the difficult path of your career. People around you whisper and doubt that your music can touch people's hearts, but with each firm stroke of the keys a note played from the depths of your soul, you learn to accept that your voice is Marcus Alias, said that accepting yourself is not giving up, but the start of continuous growth. As you stand in front of the mirror, getting ready for a big performance, you no longer feel fear or self-doubt. Instead, you feel proud and thankful for your own skills. You realize that you don't need to wait for other people to notice you. Being able to accept yourself is more than just a lesson. It's a strong promise to live a free life. Not limited by outside rules or decisions, every note and song is more than just a sound. They show a free spirit and a loving heart. Again, Marcus Aurelius says that we hold the key to freedom in our hands, the power of self-acceptance. When we learn to love and respect ourselves, the outside views and judgments become calm breezes that can't shake our strong souls. This is not only a lesson in freedom, it's also an invitation to open our minds and accept ourselves completely, flaws and all. Self-acceptance not only lights the way, but also makes the journey more interesting and fun. I feel like a bright torch shines through every dark corner of doubt and self-consciousness, revealing a strong and proud true self. Remember that learning to accept and love yourself is the most valuable thing you can do on your journey through life. It is not only the key to true freedom and happiness, but also the key to living a life not shaped by other people's standards or judgments. Inside each of us, there is a Marcus Aurelius waiting to be discovered, and self-acceptance is the beginning of that journey. This world is full of ideas and demands all the time, so learning to accept yourself is very important. It's not just giving up or settling, it's about accepting yourself as you are, flaws and all. Here is a short summary of what it means to learn to accept yourself. Recognize your flaws. The first step to acceptance is to realize that no one is perfect. Accept that your flaws and mistakes are part of what makes you special. They are not flaws that you should hide, but parts of who you are that make you unique. Self-compassion means being kind and understanding to yourself the way you would be with a close friend who is having a hard time. Self-compassion means being kind to yourself when things are hard, seeing yourself as a person, and knowing that making mistakes is a normal part of being human. Ask for help, self-talk, that is bad. Listen to how you talk to yourself inside your head. Say positive things to yourself and stop criticizing and being negative about yourself. Instead of seeing mistakes as signs of your worthlessness, see them as chances to learn and grow. Be honest about your expectations. 
Know what you can't do and set goals that you can reach that are in line with your values and skills. Don't compare yourself to other people or hold yourself to standards that are too high because society or outside forces want you to. Learn more about yourself by examining your thoughts, feelings and actions without judging them. Getting to know yourself better can help you spot patterns of self-doubt or fear and come up with good ways to deal with them. It takes a lifetime of self-discovery, self-compassion and self-love to learn to accept yourself. Accepting who you really are and recognizing your worth will help you live a full and honest life. Lesson number seven, accept that things change. It was Marcus Aurelius's view that the world is always changing and that our lives are part of a bigger cycle that we can't change. This lesson from Alias shows us how important it is to accept change, not as a source of stress, but as a way to find inner peace and mental power. Understanding and accepting impermanence makes us less anxious and afraid about how other people see us. When we realize that everything is temporary and nothing is permanent, the opinions of others become much less important. This awareness helps us focus on the present and live our lives more fully and honestly. We become less reliant on outside validation and more focused on our immediate experiences and contributions encourages a more modest view of life and a better grasp of other points of view. It teaches us that time is limited and so is the damage that other people's opinions can do to us. Let's look at the life of a man named David every morning before he goes to work. David now sits quietly and meditates for 15 minutes, focusing on his breathing, observing each breath and observing without judgment as he follows his thoughts and feelings. David becomes more aware of the constant changes in his mind and emotions and realizes that every thought and feeling has a temporary manifestation and disappears like smoke. This helps him reduce his fear of others' opinions and his workload at work. It is also temporary and will pass in so David learns to live in the present and not let his mind be dominated by worries about the future or regrets about the past. He is very calm, focused and able to face life's challenges with the care and simplicity that follows nature's immunity. Life is not just a lesson, it is the basic principle of living without being guided by other views to appreciate the changing times, to change and to find peace in the changing nature of life, to lead a full and self-directed life. This is what Marcus Aelius, one of the great Roman emperors and a famous philosopher taught us. True freedom comes from caring for others. When you accept this philosophy and apply it to your life, you will begin to see that the real power does not lie with others. Controlling what others think, but not how you act in their minds. This is what Marcus Aurelius, one of the great emperors of Rome and a famous philosopher from, teaches us. True freedom comes from letting go of what others think of us. When you accept this philosophy and apply it to your life, you will begin to see that true power is not in controlling what others think, but in controlling how you react to their opinions. Life only stays the same when you change. Change is a part of everything, from the changing of the seasons to our own growth. It can be hard to accept change, but it's necessary for our growth and well-being. It's important to accept that change is a natural part of life. Fighting it will only make you frustrated and stuck, Accept that change is going to happen and see it as a normal part of your journey. Develop adaptability. Instead of being afraid of change, work on becoming more flexible. Develop the kind of mind that can handle change and adaptability. Instead of seeing change as a threat to your security, see it as a chance to learn and grow. Allow uncertainty. Uncertainty can be upsetting, but change often brings it. Learning to accept uncertainty, on the other hand, can help you grow as a person and open up new doors for you.
trust that you can find your way through the unknown by being open and curious about it. Let go of control. When things change, it's pointless to try to control every part of your life. Instead, work on letting go of the need to be in charge and going with the flow of life. When things change, have faith that you have the power and tools to adapt and do well. Find meaning in change. Every change, no matter how hard, has the ability to make you grow and change. As things change, think about what you can learn from them and look for meaning when things are unclear. To make even the hardest changes into chances to grow as a person, you need to find meaning in them. Accepting change isn't always easy, but it's an important lesson that can help you be more resilient, flexible, and happy. You can handle the changes in your life with ease and confidence if you are willing to let go of old ideas and embrace new ones. We hope this video inspired you to start your own Stoic journey. If you liked it and want to see more deep lessons from Stoic philosophy, please like, share and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future videos. Also, please leave a comment below with your thoughts or suggestions for other Stoic philosophers we should look into. Remember that life is a journey of spiritual freedom and we'll see you on the other side.